Hey everybody, Jason E. Kelly, the star of Death Loop coming at you. This is Kimberly Brooks. Well, hey there, how you doing? I'm Dave Fenoy. And I got this question, when did I really feel represented in video games? I don't game as much as I used to. Um, so answering that question is challenging. I can tell you beyond a shadow of doubt though, from my interactions with the fans and with players and other members of the gaming community that are professionals at this and I'm an amateur. Um, Deathloop, even though it's kind of tongue in cheek to say that. Back in 1997, I worked on a game called Dark Rain for Activision. And I was hired to be the voice of the game, the computer voice that took the player through the game. Deathloop has made an incredible impact on the fact that I am the voice of, one of, one of the voices of that game and been able to be one of the faces of that game has been an incredible experience. Well, I've got to say the Walking Dead game where I was the playable character in season one, uh, that was back in 2013. The game won uh, more than 100 Game of the Year awards. I was nominated for best performance in a video game a number of times. Um, and it was the first time that I got to play the main character. And it was the first time to my recollection that the main character, the playable character, uh, was a black person. And knowing that that particular game has had an impact on gamers as far as representation is concerned, um, I'm acutely aware of how important this has been, and I hope that there's more of it. And I remember thinking at the time, wow, this is really cutting edge. Activision hired a black actress to take the, the player through this game and this experience. And um, I felt that's really cool and that's really cutting edge um, back then because you just really didn't see representation like that. So the first time I felt representation, I was actually doing it. As far as uh, film or TV, I first felt represented in TV and when Different Strokes first came out. Um, Gary Coleman and Todd Bridges were brilliant and I identified with them being fish out of water and in a place that they didn't fully fit in, but made the best of it. At least they were scripted to be that way. Um, on TV as well, Diane Carroll, the late Diane Carroll, when she was on Dynasty, it was the first time I'd ever seen wealthy black people on TV before. And that made an impact on me. I grew up in a time when there wasn't a lot of black representation on television. Um, there were some shows that come to mind like Sanford and Son and Good Times. Those shows were funny and they were important, um, but they also were shows that were very stereotypical of, of the lifestyle that we portrayed black people to have. Um, and it wasn't until the Cosby show came around where I really felt like really represented in a really positive light and to see an affluent black family with children that were smart it was really um wonderful and i think it set a standard um that changed television and changed the way that black people were represented movie wise coming to america again the first time i saw dark-skinned west african people being presented in a light of royalty and granted it's a fictional country um but that was mostly if not all nigerian culture and i relate to that um i'm not nigerian but i'm mende and so to see west african culture being presented in that way was powerful for me at that age um <clears throat> and you know i felt the same way when black panther came out uh to that point though we keep showing movies with fictional african countries um, as the star of the show. And I think it's high time that we start portraying uh, the entire uh, pantheon of African nations in the true lights of, that they really are. And it will surprise most people to find out just how much wealth and just how much prosperity there is in a lot of these countries that is just never really presented. Um, you always see pictures of the videos of the Serengeti, or you always see the pictures of a jungle and think that it's that, but it's not. How far has representation come? That's a very good question. I think representation is coming along nicely. Representation in all forms has come a long way in film, in games, in television. 
Um, we are now seeing ourselves reflected in these mediums more than ever. And it's really exciting to be a part of it. I think as long as you have more developers, game developers, uh, designing from their heart and from the culture that they know, uh, I think we'll continue to see more and more of this. I've noticed it in video games. I've noticed it on television. I've noticed it uh, in movies. Now, since uh, the death of George Floyd, it was a huge upgrade. It's been coming along for a long time. I started back in the early, early 90s, and um, I can remember the amount of auditions and opportunities that were there for me were very small. For years and years and years, um, when you wanted to make a movie that was mostly about uh, black people, uh, very often the general market did not want to uh, make those movies. I, or I would say that management, uh, ownership, uh, producers, the people who put the money into films did not want to make a film uh, about black people uh, and especially about black people in another place uh, in another time and fantasy. But um, the Black Panther changed all that. One of the biggest movies Ever. Um, and now there is so much and it is so exciting to be a part of because there's just a lot to say and a lot of different point of views, a lot of different perspectives. And um, we're starting to see that, hear it, experience it. And I think we are all better for it. The more we have that happen, the better off the entire industry will be. Um, I think that we need more people in those of those same uh, differences in positions of power to green light projects and not just seek approval to make the projects. We just need more. That's all. You just need more people green lighting great things and it'll be fun. Now, I have been asked who my um, who my inspirations are. The person that's inspired me the most in my career is Mr. Morgan Fred. Enough said. Mel Blanc, for instance, um, who was a great inspiration to me because what he did transcended race, transcended gender, transcended age. All of those things were unimportant because the voices and characters that he came up with were characters that we still love to this day. And they were all so unique and different. And I've just always been inspired by um, just that creativity and that ability to entertain and to transform these drawings, this art um, with your voice. So I would say Mel Blanc is definitely one of my greatest inspirations. James Earl Jones. When I first started in voiceover, my very first job was uh, imitating James Earl Jones, Luke, you are my son, for the Disney Channel. And they put a coffee pot just underneath my lip, and it gave it that echoey sound that uh, James Earl Jones got uh, when he was uh, playing Darth Vader. Uh, and I'd always loved him as an actor and that voice, that amazing voice. So, uh, James Earl Jones, thank you. He was easy reader on Electric Company and helped me learn how to read. And then he was Mr. Joe Clark and Lean On Me, right at the age where I probably needed a Joe Clark in my life. Um, made a Im big impact on me there. Met him a few years ago in 2009. Was wonderful. Loved him in glory again. Strong, stoic, quiet, but intense black leading males have always resonated with me. This fatherly energy and he's got that. And um, I don't know. I think his I've watched just about every movie he's ever made. And I think he's probably had the most impact on me.